So this week's QR code on Raw has a countdown clock. The countdown clock ends on June 17, which is this coming Monday's Raw in Corpus Christi. You refuse salvation, the message read, the reckoning is inevitable. And so it appears that Bo Dallas, Uncle Howdy's crew, is likely debuting next Monday on Raw. You know, like to see people employed and everything, but I can't say I'm looking forward to this. I cannot say I'm looking forward to another spooky faction in WWE. And I, I've said this before. I mean, the thing is, whenever I see something spooky now, like Tatum Paxley, you know, she'll do a match and then she'll do a bridge. And like everyone has to talk about how creepy it is. And it's like, she's doing a bridge, kick her legs out, punch her. Like, <laughs> why is this creepy? She's step, upside down. Step on her stomach. You know, you know what I want in a real fight is for someone to put themselves in a compromising position. <laughs> like, that doesn't scare me. Well, I just. So, anyway, man. every time I see it, all I can think about is Alexa the pandemic. Doll? No, oh, the yeah. pandemic. Well. Because all of this stuff was done during the pandemic, during a horrible period in wrestling a horrible period in humanity like i don't want to remember the pandemic and it's all it reminds me of it feels so dated to see the spooky stuff so they're well, just gonna he, try it again and a lot of what this is a controversial take is if you loved the stuff you loved the stuff but a lot of the bray wyatt stuff was a huge miss for me and once the nostalgia and the tears dry up, and once this new thing debuts, I mean, at first, it's going to be pretty crazy, and it'll probably be pretty awesome. But then as it goes on, we'll see, because that was one of the big problems with Bray Wyatt. I love the John Cena thing, because it was one of those things that, if you're going to give me something wacky, make it so over the top. And the thing with Cena was... I thought perfect and the best thing that ever happened out of the Bray Wyatt thing, but I don't want to see Alexa Bliss in a doll. I want to see Nikki Storm back or Nikki, uh, whatever her name is. Cross. But Nikki Cross, thank you. I'd like to see her back, but, you know, will she be utilized? Because they didn't before, over and over again. So I don't know. We'll see how it goes, but uh, again. Cautiously optimistic, I guess I'll say, or pessimistic. <laughs> Let's just go to a break. Yes, we Wrestling need to. Wrestling Observer Live. <laughs> Clarify one thing I said at the end of that segment there. I hope so. Everyone's confused. Okay. Look, and just put it plainly, a lot of it, a lot of what Bray Wyatt did, a lot of what the Wyatt family did, a lot of what Alexa did when she was talking to her psychiatrist, a lot of what happened in that fun house was really effing stupid to me. So I don't know how I feel about this, because, again, I don't want to kill Bray Wyatt's leg. See, the man has passed away, and there's a lot of people that feel a certain way about all of the stuff that he did. They absolutely love it, and they feel deeply about it, how it was moving wrestling forward and, and whatever it is. But let's be honest, a lot of it sucked. And a lot of people got sucked into that vortex to steal one from Chris Jericho, who stole it from Jim Cornette. And a lot of it was not made better. Seth Rollins was not made better by this. Randy Orton and large mallets and all that stuff, it was not made better. So I'll say I am cautiously optimistic that they know that from before. And now with this new regime having full control over this, maybe they can move it forward in a way that makes it really interesting week after week after week when it comes to them not only appearing in pre-taped things, but also in the ring for matches. Mm. Well, I guess we'll see uh, Monday when Bo Dallas, Uncle Howdy, mm -hmm. Dexter Loomis, Wait, it, D Dexter? Joe Gacy, him. Joe Gacy, Eric Rowan and Nikki Cross. Holy smokes. No Alexa Bliss. So let's let's uh well she's uh unavailable at the moment. Let's right. let's think about uh how many how many great uh, Uncle Howdy segments do we remember? None? Well, okay. How many great Dexter Loomis segments do we remember? 
Well, uh, that's you know that's none. subjective. How many how many great Joe Gacy segments we remember? Well, mm. mm-hmm. I did like and the Vintner. You know, the Vintner was he had moments there, and Nikki is great. Nikki's great. Nikki's a great wrestler, but and let me they, ask a question: How many great Nikki Cross segments did we see with her new gimmick? Can mm. anybody remember any of her new gimmick? This is going to be something else. Well, this will be something else. It is. The it synergy is. of a whole bunch of horrible gimmicks being put together to perhaps make a great gimmick? <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, let's go. We'll see. Hit the QR code. Hikaleo's on his way to WWE. Hey, now. Yes, we need more Bloodline members. Motongans. So he is going to show up and then... Haku better make it into the Hall of Fame next year. I mean, I, come on. I can't believe you didn't make it in really? this year. But yes, the uh, you know what the bloodline expands because we need the bloodline versus we need a new bloodline civil war because yeah. we got to have Roman mm-hmm. and his crew, Jay and Jimmy. Well, we don't know that yet. They're on well, different he, shows. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. At some point, you're going to have to even out these sides. And right now, if it's true Hikaleo's coming in, and it's true that Jacob Fatu was signed. You add them in with T- Tamatonga and Tangaloa, Tangaloa, and then you have Solo Sokoa. And will Solo split off from that? You got The Rock, and then on the other side, you have both Usos and The Rock and Roman Reigns. So, you know, do you bring somebody else in? Do you split Solo off? At some point, I'm sure we're going to have some sort of four-on-four. So then we've got Dax Harwood at action. He's injured. He, uh, you'll never guess, got hurt in a ladder match doing a crazy spot. The, uh, he did a pile driver onto Matt Jackson on a ladder and messed up his back. And then basically admits he hid the injury. And he was in very, very bad shape. He had a giant hematoma on his back after this Saturday's match. Told Doc Sampson, Doc Sampson said, brother, you need x-rays on your pelvis. You need to take time off or... Or you may have to retire. So him and and Cash are off television. And you know, I was at. Um, well, where you may was have I? to retire. Yeah, for it's a bad. Hematoma? Well, he's got a lot of issues. Okay. So I was at it was Double or Nothing, right? Was it Double or know. Nothing? When? I'm in trying Vegas? to think. I'm trying to think what show I saw this at. It was Double or Nothing. So they were doing that. Uh, Match where they brawled all over the building. Anarchy. Anarchy in the arena. Mm-hmm. And Dax and Matt end up brawling right down next to me, actually, because I was in the crowd. And they come down the stairs, and they're like four feet away from me, okay? So, you know, Dax is lower. Matt's up higher on the steps than Dax is. So Matt's, you know, pummeling him down the stairs or whatever. And so Max or uh, um, Matt hits Dax. Matt and Dax, Max. Matt hits Dax, and Dax bumps like two feet from me. Okay, so since I'm on the I'm on the far end, you know, my seat is right there in the aisle. They've got you know when you go down the aisle, they've got those metal uh, things you hold on to if you need a assistance going down the stairs. Railing. Railing. Yes. So he bumps, I swear to God, Dax bumps on these steps, and as he falls back, his fucking neck in the back, or his his neck in the back of his head, it hit this metal barricade so hard, like right in front of me. I thought he broke his neck, and he got up. Yeah, that, that should tell you everybody how hard he hit this barricade. <laughs> Let me tell you, he hit this barricade so hard with only his neck. Like, it was crazy enough that he was bumping down the stairs, but, like, he bumped down the stairs and accidentally hit his neck. He, like, rabbit lariated himself with a metal barricade. Ah. It was brutal. And I was like, this guy ain't going to get up. And then he got up and he kept going. But then the other thing I noticed was uh, this incredible, permeating stench what? of Icy Hot. <laughs> he had like I, I don't know I, I presume it was him I guess it might have been Matt but like one of the two of them had taken a bath in Icy Hot so I mean just him. from head to toe my eyes started to water and bleed it's like oh my god 
Like, this guy is beat up. So hopefully he can take some time off, heal up, come back good as new. But my goodness, that was that was a wake-up call. And I think that was before they actually did the uh, the spot through the ladder where he ended up getting hurt. So anyway. That, that spot of rolling down the steps, I was at the Great American Bash in Baltimore when Kevin Sullivan and Chris Benoit and brawled. And there's a lady in the men's bathroom, just Dusty Rhodes on commentary was great. But Benoit did that roll down the steps with, with Sullivan and – aesthetically it was amazing but stop doing that we've had too many spots on steps where somebody has been hurt whether it be rolling down them like this or samoa joe jumping down them i forget what i know it was tna where he just did a big senton on the steps for god knows what reason but it's just it's one of those things that doesn't need to be done although then again with anarchy in the arena i don't know you just you, i guess you have to do these things Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.